Next, I'd like to welcome Speaker of the House, David Osborne. House Speaker David Osborne, who brought his fan club as well. A louder fan club at that. <laughs> has served in the Kentucky House of Representatives since 2005 and is speaker since January 8, 2019. He represents the 59th House District in Oldham County. Osborne is a recipient of multiple awards, including the Children's Alliance 2022 Champion for Children Award, Prevent Child Abuse Kentucky's Champions for Children Mary Ellen Award in 2018, the 2020 Outstanding Service Award from the Kentucky Association of Chiefs of Police, and multiple MVP awards from the Kentucky Chamber. Please give a rousing warm welcome for House Speaker David Osborne. Thank you all for having me. It's great to be here. I appreciate it. Um, let, let me join in the, the, the chorus of, of those welcoming my friend Derek Graham uh, to leadership. Uh, Derek and I were sweet mates when I first came into the legislature, uh, and, and I've considered him a great friend uh, ever since. Uh, and uh, Senator Neal, congratulations to you as well. We have both come a long way since that 2005 trip to, to China. But uh, thank you. I also want to, want to welcome Louisville Mayor Craig Greenberg uh, for his uh, uh, first trip to the chamber dinner as, uh, as the newly elected mayor. And, and as I have told uh, the mayor on, on a couple of occasions, it will surprise nobody in this room that there was anybody, there was nobody rooting harder for his defeat than I was. <laughs> but I have also said there is nobody rooting more for his success than I am, and I pledge the support of the Kentucky House of Representatives to help, uh, help in your efforts in Louisville. And I am honored to be here tonight to deliver a message on behalf of the men and women that actually did pass the policies that have set Kentucky on a course for success, and that is the, the, mem the men and women that make up the Kentucky House of Representatives. Ladies and gentlemen, this is an exciting time to be a Kentuckian. We have a lot of challenges, but my gosh, we have incredible opportunities. We are beginning to finally realize real measurable results from the policy changes and investments that we've made over the past seven years. These efforts include passing budgets and road plans that are based on, on needs, not based on wants. Of course, this is despite numerous vetoes and calls for more pet projects on, pro on projects that are not proven. Our approach to state spending has been simple. These are taxpayer dollars, and they must be invested carefully and thoughtfully in manners that will, that will continue to pay benefits for future generations. We have created the largest budget reserve in Kentucky history, despite multiple vetoes. And with this commitment, it has left us prepared for disasters like the tornadoes in western Kentucky, the tragic floods in eastern Kentucky, it's also left us prepared to take advantage of incredible opportunities, like the largest economic development project in Kentucky history, the Blue Oval Plant in Glendale. We're also modernizing our tax code to make it us more competitive. In 2018, we lowered the rate from 6% to 5%. On January 1st, it went to 4.5%, leaving over $625 million in the pockets of Kentucky taxpayers. And our first action during this session was to pass House Bill 1, which lowers it again to 4% beginning next year. And if we remain committed to the, and disciplined to that approach, when the fiscal year closes June 30th, we will hit the triggers that will take us to 3.5%. Today, we sent House Bill 1 to the governor. As usual, it, it took the Senate about five weeks to catch up with us. <laughs> now, seriously, I, I, I love my colleagues in the Senate. Actually, I love some of my colleagues in the Senate. <laughs> Actually, I have a fond affection for a few of the people down in the Senate. But now, seriously, they are, they, are, they are great partners in the work that we have done uh, to make Kentucky a better place to live and work. And I am hopeful that the governor will sign House Bill 1. But should he fail, we are also prepared to ride, override yet another veto. Of course, our work has gone way beyond tax cuts. 
We prevented a major increase in employer premiums by modernizing our workers' comp laws. We retooled work unemployment insurance benefits to incentivize job training and make them more comparable to, to other states, despite a governor's veto. We are requiring state agencies and programs to consider the cost of implementing administrative regulations, despite a governor's veto. And we also invested $320 million in broadband expansion. Of course, following a familiar theme, we did it by overriding a veto. This is an incredible list of accomplishments. And by the way, we've done it while addressing the biggest financial crisis in, in many generations, the public pension systems. We've allocated nearly $20 million, $20 billion, excuse me, to these funds and engaged in major reforms to ensure that they remain solvent. This is because of the hard work of the men and women that make up the Kentucky House majority, now 80 strong. As usual, this session will provide us some, some, some unique opportunities and challenges. It will be the first in four years where we are not tax, tasked with tackling a budget, a pandemic, or redistricting. A quarter of my colleagues in the House are in their first term. That's an amazing number, but dwarfed by the fact that 82 of my 100 colleagues in the House have served six years or less. Now, I will tell you, this is the brightest and most capable class that I have seen in my time in the legislature, and their enthusiasm is reigniting our overall energy as we look forward to tackling the issues at hand. Without a doubt, we must address the crisis within the Kentucky juvenile justice system. Just this week, we saw legislation, House Bill 3, authored by Kevin Bratcher, aimed at improving conditions for juveniles in the system, as well as protecting the men and women that work with them. Our attention will also return to building a workforce. The policies we enacted continue to pay off in economic growth and jobs, and now we must ensure that Kentuckians are ready, willing, and capable of filling those positions. You know firsthand the challenges that the labor shortage is causing. Job openings run the gamut, from skilled repairmen to healthcare workers to classroom teachers. And we are committed to identifying ways to help recruit and retain a talented workforce. Our efforts will continue to be aimed at not only improving educational opportunities and access to training, but also to ensuring public assistance programs designed to help people are not, are not becoming a barrier to them entering the workforce. As we have said when we talk about modernizing our tax code to make us more competitive, we're not just talking about using the tax code to create jobs anymore. We're talking about compete, using the tax code to compete for skilled and talented workers. Using the tax code as a, as a workforce recruiting and retention tool is something we've never been able to talk about before, but it is possible because of the work that we have done. We also recognize that today's students are tomorrow's workforce, and you'll see us continue to focus on education. This current budget includes historic investment at all levels of public education, and we must redouble our efforts to make sure that those dollars flow to the classrooms where they can most effectively benefit students. We have illustrated the importance that we place on public schools, but we must also empower students and their families, even if that means public charter schools and private schools. If we're going to say that children are our priority, we must put them first. This House majority will fund students. This House majority will not fund systems. <laughs> Many times tonight, I have mentioned our commitment to making Kentucky a better place. We are all proud Kentuckians, but our Commonwealth's potential is greater than every single one of us in this room can possibly imagine here tonight. We are committed to the course we travel. We will stay that course, and our best days truly do lie ahead. Thank you.